He brings up American musician Money Mark's Insects Are All Around Us. Copyright prohibits me from cutting to the original here, but you can find it on YouTube. It opens with these words. Insects are all around us. They produce many sounds at many frequencies and volume levels. We're so accustomed to hearing insects' sounds that we seldom listen to them. Crickets produce their chirps by rubbing their wings together. Rough spots on the cricket's wings produce the chirping vibrations which we hear. I first met Mike during his doctoral studies in Aberdeen. He entered our department's main seminar room carrying a waterproof bike pannier with welded instead of sewn seams, a design that could be converted into a backpack by way of a patented molded polymer interlocking mechanism. Was it a soft good, such as a piece of clothing or a knapsack, or was it a bike accessory like a helmet or a mudguard? Well, neither. It was just plain transformational. I hadn't talked to him yet, but I already knew he and I shared a common passion for materials and design. Today I bring to you product designer and social anthropologist Mike Anusas, who is lecturer at the University of Edinburgh in Scotland. Mike has recently co-edited a book with Christian Simonetti entitled Surfaces, Transformations of Body, Materials and Earth. If you're interested in just how far anthropology can reach beyond the human without ever really losing touch, well, then get a hold of their book. In it, Anousis tells us the story of his own doctoral research, much of which he spent studying a group of product designers in their creative space on the outskirts of Glasgow. Anousis likes to draw on the thinking of Brazilian Czech philosopher Willem Flosser, who speaks of the gesture of making as a force and a decisive power in manipulating and shaping the world. Anousis' observations show in detail how this so-called gesture sees the surfaces of hands reach for many other surfaces to puncture their and tear and distort them in a, a practice of working towards coherence. According to Flusser, to work also always means disturbing and destroying. Anousis emphasizes that to make is to transform surfaces. He's curious about the ways in which existing surfaces give birth to new surfaces. In other words, he traces the material outlines of creativity. How do forms come into existence? Is it just the genius of the maker? He studies with equal intensity the landscape that harbors the workshop, the messiness of each of the designer's desks, and the final forms that hatch from these settings. But his keenness is not limited to material surfaces. He also follows the manifold sounds that bathe these designers' minds, from the hum of machinery to fans to a radio playing somewhere. It's like money marks, crickets rubbing their wings all over. But what makes Mike's work truly anthropological, and this is the part that I'm so passionate about, is his attention to what other observers might consider inconsequential. These are the things we are so accustomed to that we pay them so little attention. While the design team's winning idea is captured by a photograph of a designer holding together materials to stimulate the look of a yet-to-be-made product, Anousis draws our attention away from the center of this focus. He actually wants us to study the shirt worn by the man holding these materials. While the designer's mind may be seen as confined to his brain, his ideas actually spring from what I would call a confluence of ignored chirps, as we might call them, uh, and, but Anousas and others often speak of friction, much like the rubbing wings of a cricket. The patterns printed on the textile of this designer's shirt form another such surface, another cricket's wings, if you will, that contributes to the making of the final chirp. Anousis tracks the checked pattern of that shirt to the history of Scottish lattice making, which, believe it or not, becomes a key feature in the studio's final design. 